You are taking a live look right now at the Israel Gaza border as sirens are sounding again at this hour across Israel. More rockets launched toward northern Israel right now. This comes as heavy fighting is being reported in the southern Gaza city of Han Yunus today, a day after Israel said that it was withdrawing thousands of troops from other areas. The Israel Defense Force is also saying that it expects the war will continue through at least the end of this next year. I do want to talk about all of the latest developments, so let's bring in Tal Heinrich, an Israeli government spokesperson. Thank you so much, as always, Tal, for taking the time to be here with us. Thank you, Josh. First off, I do want to talk a little bit about what happened there on New Year's. As the clock did strike midnight there in Israel, there was a barrage of rockets that was fired by Hamas. What can you tell me about that? As you guys are trying to celebrate the New Year, you have rockets coming in your direction. I saw it personally with my own eyes. I was based in Tel Aviv at midnight, and exactly uh, when the clock hit midnight, Hamas fired dozens of missiles towards south and central Israel. And there you have it. Instead of having fireworks and celebrations in the skies, listening to people, you know, uh, cheering at midnight, you see the, these very sad images in the skies of interceptions. Thankfully, we have the Iron Dome, uh, but it's uh, it, it's outrageous. We have gotten used to living uh, under such a reality for all the years in which Hamas has been in power in Gaza, and we say no more. You know that since the beginning of the war that Hamas has dragged us into on October 7th, more than 13,000 rockets, 13,000 rockets, Josh, were fired towards Israeli territory. This is not a reality that we will agree to. This is why we're operating in Gaza right now. So we wanted a different uh, uh, start for the new year, but I can tell you that for many of us, it's still October 7th, 2023, because we still have 129 hostages being held captive by a brutal terrorist organizations for 80 plus days in Gaza. And it feels as if time is standing still for many of us, all of us, I think we can say. So, um, you know, the the custom, of course, is, is to, is to uh, take upon oneself uh, resolutions, make new decisions for the coming year. Uh, usually individuals make it, but I can tell you that in Israel, we are making uh, these decisions for the new year as a nation, and we are very united, and the resolve is clear. We will destroy Hamas, we will eliminate their terrorist regime, we will bring back all of the hostages home, nobody will be left behind, and Gaza will never pose a terror threat to us again. Now, we have seen video of a Hamas operative being interviewed. It was released a short time ago, and he did say that Hamas does, in fact, use Gaza civilians as human shields, which is something that you've mentioned when I've spoken to you. Other Israeli government uh, spokespersons have mentioned that as well. Do you hope the public is going to listen to that message and maybe watch that video and understand the dangers that are posed to Gaza civilians by Hamas? We always hope, Josh, that more and more people around the world will understand what we're dealing with. Uh, we have said it all along, not only now, also in previous rounds of conflict with Hamas. This is what they do. That's their strategy. Um, they are committing a double war crime when they target our civilian population from inside and underneath their own civilian population. And they admit it they, in, in interrogations, Hamas commanders, that uh, we have interrogated here in Israel. They say it on record. We have shown video proof of the, this strategy. And unfortunately, you have many in the international community uh, uh, overlooking this very sad aspect. And then you have some who definitely, many rather, who definitely acknowledge that Hamas are doing this, using the Palestinian civilians as human shields. But then they put the pressure on Israel when Israel operates against these terrorists. And that is, uh, uh, that is outrageous because they are, in fact, incentivizing this use use of human shields. If you put the pressure on Israel, if you want Israel to take the fire for Hamas's actions, um, well, you are just uh, blowing wind in, in their sails, so to say. We've also seen some of the images that have been posted by the IDF as well as the Israel Twitter page. A lot of different organizations tweeting out these photos and videos that show more weapons have now been found inside of school classrooms, including kindergartens, right? 
Yes, and we found a uh, mini tiny uh, a Hamas a uniform tailored for children, uh, photos of children, women with, with weapons. Uh, in fact, we have released also the IDF released a video of one Hamas commander, another a different one who was interrogated in Israel, and he admitted that they are exploiting children, using children to transfer ammunition. Who does that? What kind of monsters are using children for their war machine? This is what Israel is dealing with. These types of terrorists, um, that is outrageous. And to that I ask, well, where is UNICEF? Where is UNICEF? We actually heard an account, a firsthand account now from Mia Shem. She's the young woman who was shot, taken hostage by Hamas. And we did see the first propaganda video that was released by Hamas showed her, and she kind of talked about that video in about a 30-minute interview. What do you hope that people are going to take away from her story specifically? First, I, I, I watched uh, the interviews with Mia, both Mia and her family. Her mother are so courageous, so resilient. And I, I think that people out there have to understand um, that this is uh, exactly what the, the Israel, Israeli nation uh, is feeling right now. Yes, we have been through a, a terrible hell trauma on October 7th, but we will prevail. And Mia is, is a a tremendous example of this, but uh, Mia actually appeared in two propaganda videos. Uh, the first one when she was uh, being held captive by Hamas, and if you remember, you, you saw in that video how they were uh, uh, treating her, her arm, because she was injured. A vet actually operated her, as she uh, uh, described in, in her uh, account to one of the Israeli channels, and uh, it was pure propaganda, because in that video, she said that they're treating me well, but when you listen Listen to the interview. Uh, she's describing the hell she has been through, how she was traumatized, how she was watched 24-7 by a terrorist and his family, by the way, uh, how she was starved, how she wasn't even, she had to change her own uh, her, her own uh, uh, um, uh, medical equipment, the, the band-aids and so to say. And um, she has been through hell, but just like Mia, uh, kept optimistic and uh, knew that uh, she will uh, make her way out and prevail. Um, we have a moral duty to Mia, uh, by the way, to uh, promise her that she can be completely safe now when she's in Israel, that the terrorists will never ever get to her again. And to the ones who were, uh, for now, left behind, that we will bring each and every one of them home. For that reason, we will continue with the operation, we will continue with the war that we were dragged into, and we will eliminate this terrorist regime. And we've seen a lot of pro-Palestinian or I really should say anti-Israel protests that have been taking place here across the U.S. They've been across the world. What do you say to folks right now who are taking part in those protests? I know that we talked about one uh, right before we brought you on over at JFK Airport in New York, and there was one on Wall Street, uh, the same group responsible for both. But what do you say to those uh, protesters who are out there? that this is a time for moral duty. It's not just me saying it, the prime minister said it, President Biden said it, many other world leaders who uh, came here to stand with Israel in Israel uh, throughout the war have said it. It's a time for moral clarity. It is very important that we, uh, the international community, not only Israel, we just happen to be on the front lines of the war against terrorism right now, sent an unequivocal message against terrorism. The year is 2024, Josh, terrorism is a dead end and everyone around the world must understand that terrorism is a dead end. Um, so we are sending a clear message, not only to Hamas, but to every bad actor around the world right now. Don't try us, don't test us. And these people who are protesting against Israel simply don't, don't get it. They don't get it. And uh, I, I, I think they, they, they have to do some, some, some learning. They have to better understand what really happened here. And you know what? They're, they're not really helping the Palestinian civilians. Maybe they think they are, but they're not. What they're doing is serving as apologists for Hamas, because if you're not standing for Israel right now, well, you're, you're helping Hamas. And Israel does say that it is going to remove some of the troops there that have been on the ground uh, there in Gaza. What does that say about the war itself? Is that saying that things are winding down? The fight against Hamas is, is ending anytime soon? 
No, not at all. We have very clear goals for this war. We said Hamas will be eliminated, Gaza will be demilitarized, and we hope that the Palestinian society afterwards will be de-radicalized. Um, we also want to make sure that we won't see a, a resurgence, of course, of, of uh, terrorism in, in the Gaza Strip, and that Gaza will never, ever pose a terror threat to Israel again. Now, uh, this will take time. This will take time. And for that, we are making certain adjustments uh, with uh, the troops on, on the ground, the forces on the ground. But this is something very, very natural. It's just a reshuffling of, of the forces, um, some respite, uh, so, some uh, rest uh, to some of the, the troops. But it, it, it says nothing about the, the bigger picture. My last question here, what can you tell me about the next possible deal for uh, another hostage release here? Is there anything in the works? Are we far along in that? What can you actually tell me right now? That the hostages uh, plight is definitely the top of mind every day, every minute, every hour. They, they have been through horrendous uh, things. That's what we're hearing from the ones who were released. And we will continue to pursue every avenue to bring about the release of all hostages. Uh, now, we know that what has created what created the conditions uh, back in November to bring about the release of hostages, the ones who came back so far as per this outline that was mediated by international uh, actors, was the pressure that we exerted on Hamas uh, in, in, in the war on the ground. Uh, we will continue to hit them hard, and we hope uh, that this will uh, once again create the right conditions to see the release of more hostages. We will not stop, and we will not rest. We will bring them home. All right. Tal Heinrich there, Israeli government spokesperson. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to join us and help break down the latest uh, developments here in the war. Is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? I would like to say happy 2024, a safe and secure one to all of your viewers. All right. Thank you again for taking the time to be here with us. We appreciate it. Of course.